Welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series, where today we're going to be learning how to use the drawing tools within Thinkorswim. This is going to include the trend lines, support and resistance lines, and the Fibonacci's. There are a lot of other drawing tools besides those three, but before we even discuss those, let's go over the three main ways that we could even access our drawing tools. Now, the first way is going to be by coming up to the upper right hand corner and opening up this drawings tab. Then looking down below and finding the drawing tools menu here, which is then going to show us all the different drawing tools that we could use. Now, don't worry, we're going to discuss them, but up here at the top, you'll find your trend line. You'll find your support and resistance line down here. You can find the channel if you wanted to use a channel or down here, we could use Fibonacci retracements. But besides that first one, the second one can be found down here in the lower right hand corner of each of your charts. And right here, you're going to see what looks like a little pointer icon. If we go ahead and open that up, though, we're going to see a list of all of our drawing tools, just like we saw before. Now, finally, the last way and my preferred way is actually just by coming over to the chart itself anywhere on the chart and simply clicking down on the little scroll wheel in the center of your mouse. So those of you watching with a Mac probably won't be able to do this, but anyone watching with a normal mouse that has the little scroll wheel, if you go ahead and click on it like it's a button, it'll bring up the drawing tool menu wherever you click. But either way, whichever method you use, all we have to do is access our drawing tools, and then from here, select the one we want to use. If we go ahead and begin first with the trend line, we'll go ahead and click on that one. Once selected, you're going to see your cursor turns into what looks like a little pencil icon. Just telling you now, if you were to click somewhere, it is going to start drawing. So if we're looking at Apple here and we wanted to draw a, let's just say a trend line from this low at 164.08, you can see all I did is point and click. So I clicked one time and let go with my mouse. And now I'm going to come over here to the right and find my second anchor point. So I'm going to click once to start the line, a second time to end the line. You can also see a little blue box there on my first anchor point. And what that's telling you, well, is a few different things. The first one at the top, it says this is 105 days. That's the length of my line. So from my first anchor point to my second anchor point is 105 days. That is 73 bars. And each bar right now is a day. So this is saying even though it's 105 days, it was only 73 candlesticks. The third one there is telling you that from the first point to the second point is actually a 20.5% move. So from 164.08 up to 196.25 is a 20.55% up move. And right below that, it tells us that that is a $33.46 move. The final one I don't find too important, but that tells you the angle of the line. So 31.27 degrees. But besides that, if we were to actually click a second time, so again, I clicked first to start the line. I'm clicking a second time to end the line. You can now see our trend line as just this little skinny red line right here on our screen. If we wanted to get rid of that, all we have to do is right click on the line itself and then come down below and say, remove drawing. If we instead wanted to edit it, so let me go ahead and draw it again here. All we have to do to edit it is again, go ahead and right click on the line then come down below and select edit properties. This will then bring up this properties menu where we can change just about everything about this line. But some of the things that I see you actually adjusting the first one here being the right extension. So most people want their trend lines to continue indefinitely into the future. So what we're going to do is go ahead and change this from off to on. I'm also going to come down here towards the bottom and right here, I can actually change the color of the line. So in my case, for whatever reason, I always make my trend lines yellow. I'm going to go ahead and change that. I could even come over here and change the style of the line. If I didn't want it to be a solid line, I could change it to the long dash or the short dash. And I could also make the line a little bit wider or a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. And now that I'm done with that, before I hit OK here, I actually want this to always look like this in the future. So every time I draw a trend line in the future, I want it to be a yellow line with a width of two that extends forever to the right. So before I hit OK, I'm going to come down here and save it as the default, then hit OK. And first off, you can see our trend line right here has changed. It's now that yellow line that extends indefinitely to the right. 
It's also a little bit thicker. But if I was to draw another trend line, so we'll just go ahead and click one time to start the anchor, a second time to end it. And you can see that this new trend line looks exactly like this one. So those defaults did stick. Again, if we wanted to get rid of these, we could simply right click on the line and then say remove drawing. But keep in mind, this is only going to remove this specific trend line. If I wanted to clear every single drawing on this chart right now, what I could instead do is come down here to clear the drawing set. It'll then ask me if I'm sure up here, because it is going to delete everything that I've got on my screen, even though it is just two trend lines. But since I am, we'll go ahead and hit yes. And now we've got a blank chart once again. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just finished working on the beta of my very own trading journal. So those of you active traders out there, especially those of you who trade options, might find this especially useful. Here you're going to be able to quickly identify your performance by strategy, see a calendar of your daily profits and losses, and overall just create more detailed reports based on any of your filtered criteria. So check it out using the link below or head over to traderlog.io to give it a try for free for seven days and use the code traderlog50 for 50% off. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. Now, if we instead wanted to draw a support and resistance line, what we'll do is again, come down to the chart. And for me, I'm going to simply click on that little scroll wheel in the center of my mouse to bring up this little drawing tools menu. And remember the support and resistance line looks like a little dollar sign with a line below it. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And just like in the previous example, what I have to do is click once to start the line and a second time to end the line. You'll see that the default for the support or resistance is still that skinny little red line. So if I wanted to edit that, remember all I do is right click on the line, come down to edit properties. And just like before, we can adjust some of these settings. So in my case, I'm going to change the color from these to white. I'm going to make them quite a bit thicker, a width of three. And I also like to show the price on my support and resistance lines. So up here above, instead of saying do not show, I'm going to go ahead and say put that on the right. And now that I'm happy with that, and I do want all of my support and resistance lines to look like this going forward. So I'm going to come down here and hit save as default, then hit OK. So now we can see that change. And again, right here, we can see the price on the right. So this support resistance line is right at 214.26. And if I was to draw another one, again, it would look exactly like that. Thick white line with the price on the right. We'll go ahead and get rid of those again, just by right clicking, coming down below and clearing the drawing set. And the next one we'll go over is actually going to be the Fibonacci's. And I will admit, there's actually a lot of different Fibonacci's that you could use. Technically, everything below where my mouse is right now is a Fibonacci. But the one all of you have seen online or heard people talk about is actually this one right here, the Fibonacci retracements. So if we go ahead and click on that, and remembering back to how these Fibonacci's actually work, what we're looking for is a stock that's either in an uptrend or a downtrend right now. And then depending on that, what we're going to do is find the lowest point and the highest point, and we're going to draw our Fibonacci's from the low to the high. Now that does assume that the stock is an uptrend, because if it was in a downtrend, we'd actually draw it from the high to the low. But we'll go over that in a second. What we'll do for this first example, because Apple is very clearly in an uptrend right now, what we're going to do is again find the low, which is right here at 164.08. You can see again, I just clicked once to start it. Then I'm going to come over here and find the high. And I'm going to go ahead and click again here at the high. You can then see that those Fibonacci's are automatically drawn right here on our chart. And technically, the 50% line is more of an honorable mention. Not really a Fibonacci value, but a lot of people tend to use it. So we'll go ahead and leave it. But what I'd like to do to make these lines maybe a little bit more obvious is go ahead and right-click anywhere on the Fibonacci itself. Open up that Edit Properties menu again. And now down below, just like with all of our other drawing tools, we can edit the overall appearance. Some people might also remove some of these Fibonacci's if they don't find them particularly useful in, in how they do their trading. For me, I'm going to go ahead and leave it be, but for this 50% value, just so it stands out nice and clear, I'm going to go ahead and change the color from red to yellow. And I'm also going to make it a dashed line instead of a solid line. So now that we've done that, we'll come down below, save it as the default. 
hit OK. And now looking above, we've got our Fibonacci's right here on the chart. Now, like I said before, if we were looking at a stock in a downtrend instead, we would have actually drawn this from the high to the low. So if I could find an example here, trying to think of something that's been down quite a bit, we'll go ahead and pull up, let's say SoFi for this example. Oof, not a good example here, had a nice run up recently. But let's just pretend this part didn't happen right here. Let's say we're back in July and the stock has been in a nice downtrend. So what we would do is we would come up here to the high. We'd click once. We would come down to the low in our example, because remember right now it's only July. And now we've got our Fibonacci's here. To delete it, we'll again go ahead and right click, remove drawing. And now we're back to our blank slate. Now, to be honest with you, those are probably the three key drawings that I see most of you using on a regular basis. But some honorable mentions, if we go ahead and open up our drawing tool menu again, looking down here below, if we take a look at this big T right here. This is just a text note where we could actually draw notes on our chart if we wanted to. So as an example, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and click on that T. And let's say I wanted to draw something right here. I wanted to leave a note for myself. We're just going to go ahead and click. I'll then have this little note box appear and we'll just leave a note saying, I don't know, watch out for earnings. We'll then hit OK down here. And now we've got our note up here above. Just like with everything else, if we right click on it, we can edit the properties. And here you can change the direction of the arrow. You can change the alignment, the color, the size, but we'll leave it be for now. I'm not using this too frequently, so I have no reason to set any defaults for it. So we'll just come down here and hit OK. Checking out the next one, we'll open up our drawing tools again. And looking down below, another one you might use is a simple arrow. So we clicked on that. We could simply point out where on the chart maybe we bought or sold or when we want to look at it a little bit closer. Pretty simple, just an arrow that goes on your chart. You can also see right here the square and the oval, or excuse me, rectangle and oval. These are pretty much the same. They essentially let you highlight a portion of the chart. So for example, we'll just use the rectangle in this case, but remember, pretty much exactly the same between the two. And again, all we'll do is we'll click once to start. We'll click a second time to end. And you can now see that that area that we kind of highlighted is just a rectangle. And like anything else, we can edit it because I'm not a huge fan of that color. And we'll instead make it, let's say a light shade of green. We'll save it as the default. And now we've got a nice big green square directly on our chart. Most people are gonna tinker with that a little bit further by coming over here to the color. And instead of using one of these defaults here, they'll go to more. And then looking up above, I know there's a lot of options here, but if we pick any of these, what I really wanted to show you is that we can change the transparency to make it not so distracting on our chart. Because right now that big green square is very distracting, but if we make it a little bit more opaque or a little more transparent, excuse me, coming down below and now hitting OK and OK, that looks a whole lot better. But I know there's a lot of other drawing tools in here that we didn't discuss. Honestly, I don't see the vast majority of you guys using any of these down here but definitely spend some time tinkering with them. Check them out. Maybe they will work for you. But otherwise, definitely stick around for our next video in the series where we're going to be learning about how to set up your watch list and create alerts within Thinkorswim. Go ahead and click the video below, and I'll see you there.